Morton County High School in Front Royal. Welcome to tonight's broadcast. Uh, Blue Devils football as visiting Culpeper takes on Warren County in another key matchup tonight. Hello everyone, I'm Mark O'Connell, joined by uh, Steve Peacock. And Steve, we had a big thriller down at Broman Field last week. Blue Devil homecoming. It was uh, anybody's game, and in the end, the Blue Devils won it. And you know the Blue Devil uh, faithful, the team and the coaches are very happy about it. What was your takeaway from that game? Well, Culpeper got a new offensive identity. They, they ran the football. They ran it with precision. They, they ran it well, and they played well up front with a good line blocking by the offensive line, good hard running by the running backs, and uh, just an all-around good game. And defensively, Culpeper had that bend-but-don't-break mm -hmm. attitude, and they uh, came out on top with a big win against Skyline. Now they got to carry that momentum over tonight in tonight's game against Warren County and the Wildcats. They come into this uh, contest tonight against the Blue Devils with a 3-3 three and three record, and they, they're going to be a tough opponent for the Blue Devils tonight. Well, you know, I was a little caught off guard last week because I expected when I saw the Blue Devil offensive unit to see Capone Hoffman back there as a quarterback. Probably Skyline did as well. Instead, we saw Jave Colclaw predominantly. We didn't see a lot of Capone Hoffman in the back, offensive backfield in the first half. Colclaw was successful, so was Noah State and some others. But you pointed out the key factor. It was the... Uh, really the effort of the offensive line as a unit that opened up space for those running backs. Right. As your offensive line goes, so goes your offense. And, you know, they were, they were kind of going through the growing pains, you know, first five games of the season. They had a real tough opponents, but they learned their lessons. And now they came out and played a good all-around game last Friday against Skyline. they got to do the same tonight against Warren County. They're going to have to give uh, Cocaw some protection or Capone Huffman. But again, you know, it's going to have to open up the holes and uh, see how they're going to do tonight. But I, I think they're going to do very well. And they just, if they continue tonight and play as well as they did last Friday night, they're going to come out on top, control the line of scrimmage and win some football. Game. Well, I've got a feeling Coach uh, Wakefield is very happy about the effort his team had last week. I know he scouted uh, tonight's opponent. Let's catch up with him and see what he has to say about both those issues. First thing I want to say is, Congratulations on that fine win last Friday night at Broman Field. Thank you, thank you. And it was a Blue Devil homecoming, no less. <laughs> yes, it was nice. Great night all the way around. You know what? When I watch the players after the game celebrate, I mean, look, I know that teams celebrate after wins, but to me, tell me if I'm wrong, it seemed like it was really special and a certain a special energy in the air for these Blue Devil players. And what I left thinking was is that they probably knew all along they were closely in contention to get wins, and that last Friday night they put it together, it was almost as if to say, we knew we could get here. Absolutely, um, I think that's why they were so happy, because that this team, they've had all the reason to fold at times, you know, things that weren't going our way, but I said in the beginning of the year, it's about how you're playing at the end of the year, and not at the beginning. You know, you gotta play your best football at the end, and we made some adjustments during the, the bye week, and we got after it a little bit. Coach, did it concern you at all when uh, Skyline took the opening drive, and they, they ran, I think, I counted 22 plays. They got the ball down the one-yard line. Then they sort of self-destructed with the, the holding penalty, and things went awry for them. But it didn't concern you at all that your defense was out there on the field for 22 consecutive plays? They just needed to make plays, and they, they found a way to get them off the field. Because um, after that drive, although they, they had a really good opening drive, they stayed at the end zone. Um, and we just had to be a little bit sharper, and I think we were as the game settled. And I think with the exception of having to have your defense on long term almost half of that first quarter, and then also the exception of giving up that long pass play late in the second quarter, I thought your defense really responded well last week. Yeah, they played well. They really played a good football game. They were sound. Um, we gave up a touchdown offensively. Um, outside of that, you know, we put ourselves in a good situation to win. I'm going to turn it over to Steve now because I know he wants to talk to you about a new wrinkle in the offense and perhaps the emergence of a new star back there. Sounds good. <laughs> Coach, congratulations last week. I thought the offense played a complete game. Thank you. you know, offensive line, Noah Staten, you know, running back, Javay Coclaw, they did great. Yep. Now we're coming out and we got to forget that game. we got yeah. the Wildcats here of, yeah. of Warren County. And I heard you in pregame warm-up saying to your uh, skill players, Play downhill. Play downhill. Yeah. Is that what you got to do tonight against uh, Warren County? Yeah, we have to. They have a great. They have a good running game. You know, they're tough up front. They're a very gritty bunch of guys that they play four quarters, and um, we're gonna have to play four quarters to win. 
and I think that you found a new identity too with that rushing attack. So I mean, and, and Warren County's got a freshman quarterback. Yeah. What do you got to do defensively to confuse him and to get him off his game so you all can have the advantage defensively? I, I think just play sound football. You know, don't put ourselves in bad situations. Don't give up the big play. If we do that, protect the football. Uh, I think it will be okay. And the uh, other other thing I just want to say, and before I turn back over to Mark, I did want to say, now with the rushing attack and the way you ran the football last week against Skyline, that's got to set up some pass plays and play action this week. It, it does. <laughs> you know, think, we've been working on some things. Um, we'll see how the game plays out. Okay. You know, we're going you know, to try to establish the run up front and, uh, yeah, see how things go. Okay. Coach, Coach, I know that this is a cliche and that reporters ask coaches this all the time. I know it gets old, but it, it, is, it is a reality. Look. When you think about last week's win and getting it at home and all that, coming at a time when, you know, really things really came together, how much of a psychological boost is that for the team both tonight and, I mean, make, and can it carry them in, in subsequent games? I think it helps. Uh, we have a great group of kids that really work hard. They never really went too high, too low during our, um, during our struggles at the end of the year. After that, I think, yeah, I mean, it's going to help. I think so. Well, you know, one player who didn't really have the rushing totals in that game, who never really got on track, was actually Gabe Fuller, but he made up Fry for it. In, Fry, I'm yeah. sorry, Gabe Fry. I do that all the time. <laughs> Gabe Fry, but he made up for it in other ways, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Gabe's, Gabe's a kid we can use a variety of different ways. Um, we've seen him at receiver. We've seen him at in the slot. We've seen him at the running back. He can do a variety of different things, and he also helps us out on defense. Coach, I'm getting a little older because now I'm saying Gabe Fuller rather than <laughs> Gabe Fry. Now, Steve will tell you that Gabe Fuller was quite a player and a character. <laughs> I, I and it is not was. an insult, I can assure you. <laughs> and the other thing I did last week is I said Hanover several times instead of Skyline. Okay. You know, both those teams are the Hawks. <laughs> right, right. You know. It can get confusing. And tonight we got the Wildcats. Make no mistake about it. It's Warren County. It's a big game for you guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, they're a good football team. We got to come out and play well. Yeah. Well, good yeah. luck to you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us good as luck always. Tonight, coach. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Good take luck. care. Yep. All right. Well, Steve, it's always great to catch up with the coach. And I'll tell you what, I know you felt really good about Blue Devils' win last week. To me, like I was telling the coach, it was almost as if they knew they could get there. And for them, it wasn't a matter of if they would get there. It was really just a matter of when they would get there. Right. And, Mark, and you, you hit the nail on the proverbial head. It's all about momentum. And they got big momentum on that win against Skyline. Now they got to go out tonight. Warren County's going to be a tough test because you look at the rest of their schedule, it does bode well in Culpepper's favor. They went out, they're definitely going to get a, a, a seat in the playoffs. So this is a big game tonight. Warren County has lost, to, you know, they're 3-3. Three and three. They've won the games they're supposed to win, and they really, they've gotten beaten by teams that should have beaten them. So uh, it's going to be a test for Culpepper. It's going to be a run. Run it, uh, orient attack on both sides of the football. Whoever makes the least mistakes tonight is going to win the football game. Well, you know, and so we think it's going to be run oriented. But you know, last week Coach Wakefield surprised us and probably a lot of other people as well with that new wrinkle of the offensive look. Right, and I think you're going to see a, a couple pass combinations off that wrinkle tonight. He's going to throw in a couple surprises. So uh, I think uh, play action is going to work well tonight. Just, but defensively, Culpepper is really going to have to track the football in Warren County, find it, make sure they make sure tackle, don't give up the big play. Exactly. Steve, as always, looking forward to calling the game with you tonight. Tonight, it is the Wildcats of Warren County hosting the Blue Devils of Culpepper. Big game for both teams. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the coin toss to decide to how we're going to start things here tonight. Stay tuned. You're watching Blue Devils football on the Culpepper Media Network. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. 
finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Well, from Warren County High School in Front Royal, Virginia, welcome to tonight's broadcast as the visiting Blue Devils take on the Wildcats. I'm Mark McConnell. Alongside C Steve Peacock and the man up behind the camera tonight, Johnny Crawchuk, welcome aboard. The uh, homestanding Wildcats uh, in the uh, the gray and gray uniforms with the maroon numbers, visiting Blue Devils with the white jerseys, blue helmets, and blue pants. And team captains here in the center of the field in the coin toss. It looks like uh, Warren County has won it. Let's see if they're going to defer or accept it. And they are going to defer. Interesting and, call. And they're going to kick <laughs> off. And so these team captains include Robert Stratif, number 68 for the Blue Devils, number two, Nazir McDonald, number 75, uh, Grant Hibbert, and number one, Capone Hoffman. And Steve, uh, so we'll see the Blue Devils on offense first. And speaking of Capone Hoffman, he played a little different role last week in that Blue Devil win over uh, Skylock. Yeah, he played in the wide receiver uh, position, and he also played in that slot back, H-back uh, position as well. But they're going to, Culpepper's going to have to get the ball in his hands tonight, I think, against this Wildcat team from Warren County. And uh, so if they start, if they start Javay Coclaw at quarterback, then uh, you will see uh, Capone Huffman be uh, put out in the wide receiver, you know, split out in the wide receiver position, along with Najir McDonald. Javay Colclaw had a big game last week, and we also mentioned the emergence, that is, we mentioned in our pregame show, the emergence last week of Noah Staten. I was impressed with him. Steve, like you said, when you have uh, positive yardage on offense, it usually begins with your offensive line, and they did a really good job last week for the Blue Devils. They sure did, and then we're going to give them a chance to see them right here. You know, Warren County won the toss. They deferred to the second half. But I think it's very important that Culpepper jumps on them quick and sends a statement right to the Wildcats that they're, they're here ready to play. Warren County's kicker is Stuart Ashley waiting for the signal. And here is Ashley approaching the ball. He kicks and we're underway. They keep it short and they angle it. This one taken on the run. Nice run at the 40, 45, out to about midfield. That was Nazir McDonald. I'm not really certain what Warren County's strategy was on that uh, kickoff, but it didn't play, pay off for them because the Blue Devils are going to start out on offense at midfield. Well, Mark, the strategy was to keep it out of, uh, you know, the Culpeper deep uh, man return, the deep return man's hands, and uh, it kind of backfired on Warren County. And now Culpeper is going to start right at midfield. Great field position for the Blue Devils. And they go with Jave Cole Claw back there with uh, Noah Staten on his flank. They hike it to Cole, Cole Claw, bounces off the lineman, and then like a pinball, darted out to the 40-yard line. Cole Claw picks up 10 yards on his first carry and an apparent first down, although they haven't uh, officially said so. Well, it is. Now they move the sticks. How about that? 10 yards on first down. Well, Mark, and you can see right now, look at the advantage Culpepper has on the offensive line and against that defensive line of Warren County. And Culpepper's playing like almost like a modified Wildcat formation. Exactly, that's a good way of saying it. To go back to Colclaw, he lost his footing at first, he recovered it, and then the offensive line and its surge picked up positive yardage, at least five yards in the play, perhaps six. And it's gonna bring up a second down and four from the Warren County 34 yard line. And again, all uh, Culpepper's gonna do, Mark, nothing fancy. They're just getting good push off the ball up front and running it right there and leaving it for Juve Coclaw to find the open gaps and hit the hole. Blake Polari back there in the backfield along with Noah Staten and Coclaw. This time this is Staten, and they made uh, initial contact. The defender there was number 21, Ronnie Dotson. He slowed him up. 
for his teammates to come over and limit Staten to a one-yard pickup. Brings up third and three. And again, you're just going to have to, like I said, you get the offensive line, they're doing the job up front. 51 uh, for Culpepper. They're just a solvent. Jalen Brown is really playing well up, up front there, along with Grant Hibbert and, and Robert Stradiff. Third down. Here's Cole Claw straight ahead. First down and a penalty thrown in there on the run. Let's check this. This is our first penalty of the game. It's mm -hmm. a holding against the Blue Devils, and that's about when you would see that on a play such as that. I feared it would be the yellow flag for the holding, Steve. Yeah, it was It was a holding call. It was called in there in the internal line and maybe just got a hook or an arm around a player because when you run blocking, you're usually driving and pushing, that, uh, pushing forward. And sometimes if your arms get out away from your chest and get out and grab something, they're going to call a hold every time. I mean, you could call conceivably a hold every play. Yeah. But it was probably obvious right there. Big penalty for the Blue Devils because they had picked up first down yardage, Mark. Instead, they move it back to the 43. It's third and 12 now. Opening minutes here of the first quarter at Warren County High School. Got a couple of players in motion. Mifsud and Staten. Here's Cole Claw. Being pressured and being sacked for a loss. And it's Ronnie Dotson, number 21, making the play for the Wildcats. And now a fourth down, and we'll see Gabe Fry drop back to punt for the Blue Devils. Well, this drive started off pretty good, but the holding penalty really hurt them, Steve. The holding penalty hurts, and that's what you can't have, Mark. they got to play mistake-free football, but it just showed Culpepper's Achilles heel. They're a great run-blocking offensive line up top, but when you got to get them into a passing situation, the other team's quickness wins out and goes against a quicker, bigger lineman who are able to get that sack. Here's Fry's kick. It's Jacob Good back there. He takes it in at the 10-yard line. Reverses his direction and is tackled shy of the 20. In on the tackle for the Blue Devils, number 13, Nathan Martin. Number seven in there as well, Lewis Chapman. Now we'll see the Warren County offensive unit, we believe will be led by freshman quarterback Bryce Post. And he wears jersey number 10. Because yeah, I think their number one starting quarterback started the season. I think he's got hurt. And R.J. Keeney, Mark, I, I know we have a line through on the roster. Yeah, R.J. Keeney, right. He's out. He was listed as a quarterback and a senior. I think you're li right because it would be, uh, well, of course, a freshman could win that job, but the odds are usually against that. Right. All right, here we are. Warren County on offense for the first time. They go with the run. Pretty good footwork there by the running back, and that's Ronnie Dotson now who doubles uh, as a quarterback and now a running back. Positive yardage for the Wildcats, moves it out to the 28-yard line. He picked up nine yards in the play. It's second and one. And again, Warren County, if you look at their offensive line, Mark, they're not big up front either on the offensive line. They're going to try to use their quickness against this uh, Blue Devil defense. Here's Bryce Post. Back to Dotson, the ball carrier. He'll have a first down. As they tackle him at the 30-yard line, in on the tackle, Taha Ali, number 77. Number 40 in there for the Blue Devils is Blake Polari. And number four, Brad Krim. You can expect him, him to be near the football all the time. And then we've got another Culpepper player to mark, a number 50, Cameron Buck, Buck, Buckin, and who's doing a very good job on there, too, in a defensive line. Number 13 is Nathan Martin. We'll try to pick up some other starters for you as we can. Here's first and 10 Wildcats now from the 30-yard line. Blue Devils showing some pressure. They keep it on the run. This is Dotson picking his way for yardage out to about the 35-yard line. I think with forward progress, that's where they'll mark it. And it'll pick up five yards and second and five coming up. 8-15, clock ticking first quarter. We're scoreless here at Warren County High School, home of the Wildcats. Another 3A classified team. And, of course, uh, you know, Steve, uh, all these games now are big, and the Blue Devils got a big win last week against Skyline. They'd like to keep it going. We've got some size up there on that right tackle position, uh, defensive tackle for the Blue Devils, Steve. That's number 77, Taha Ali. He's yeah. a junior. Yeah, he's, he's a big boy. <laughs> he's about 340 pounds, and he needs to use his weight and girth up there up front against this smaller offensive line. Here's second and five for Bryce Post, his first pass out there to the side. And the receiver will be across the 40-yard line for a first down. That was number 11, Jacob Good. So the Wildcats, another, a new set of downs. We'll have it now at the 41-yard line, first and 10. Bryce Post is the freshman quarterback. 
One of their go-to players, as you can see now, is going to be Jacob Good, the wide receiver, and the running back, Ronnie Dodson, number 21. Also in there is number 44, Hunter Wines. So here is Post on first and 10 from his own 40-yard line. Two receivers to the left and one top of your screen. They fake it and they go to the receiver there. Makes a nice move, Jacob Good. He got by the first defender, Steve, and he picked up positive yardage. He did for them what uh, Eastern View's Diego Hunter does for his team on that play. Well, Mark, he was wide open too. If you looked at before the play, Culpepper was playing really soft coverage on him. They were playing out, you know, backing off him by about a good 10 yards. And that was an easy throw for that freshman quarterback. Just throw it out there in the flat. When he caught the ball, he already had, you know, could gain about six, seven yards. Culpepper needs to lock up tighter on him. Here's the pitch to the running back. This is Dotson. And they forced him out of bounds for a loss in the play. And making the tackle was Jaden Brown. There he is, number 51. Big play for the Blue Devils because the Wildcats have been moving here uh, mainly with the rushing attack. They've thrown a couple passes as well. There he is, 51. Jaden Brown, sophomore defensive end, making the tackle for Culpepper. And it brings up a third, net, third down and three. Back to Ronnie Dotson, the running back. Dotson found the hole and then stepped it up a little bit in speed, went straight ahead, picked up first down yardage, Blue Devil territory, they mark it down at the 46 yard line, first down Wildcats at that spot. And, and Mark Dodson's not very big and powerful runner, he's just shifty mm -hmm. and a little quickness, and he's giving Culpepper a little bit of problems right now from the defensive standpoint. So Warren County first down now, Culpepper territory at the 46 yard line. Their man in motion is good. They pick it to him. We got a whistle to stop this play, likely against the uh, offense, unless it's a timeout. I don't see what the call is. I don't see laundry on the field. Well, it's a false start. Uh -huh. And it's going to cost them five yards. First penalty against Warren County. Moves it back to the Warren County 49 yard line, where it will be first and 15. 6 12 to play here in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Both teams have had the football once. You're looking at Warren County on offense, decked out in those solid gray uniforms and the maroon numbers. Home of the Wildcats. Steve and I will be talking trivia at different <laughs> points tonight. Right now, we've got a uh, Warren County drive. They fake it to Dotson. Post keeps it. Now he throws it. This one bobbled. And the Blue Devils say they have picked it off. Let's see who it is. It's number 40. It's Blake Polari. Steve, I think we ought to take a look at that one again. How did you see it? I uh, thought the receiver had it. Well, let's go to replay, Mark. And, and look right here. It's a fake handoff inside. Look, play action. And, and the quarterback for Warren County had plenty of time. He kind of hesitated. And then he threw it. And he threw a strike. But it bounced off the receiver's hand. And Polari's right there for the deflection. Good play by Polari. And gives the Blue Devils momentum and back on offense. For the second time tonight. And again, with excellent field position, they'll start this one at their own 45-yard line. Jave Colclaw back there. Direct snap to him. He gets behind the offensive line. Picks up positive yardage. Five yards to be exact. Stopped at midfield by number 42. Making the tackle, Patrick Coffrin. He is an outside linebacker and a sophomore. Second and five from midfield for the Blue Devils. When you look at the linebacking crew, Mark, for uh, uh, Warren County, they're very young and they're also very little. And again, but they're very quick. And Culpepper's just got to get a big body on them and get five yards a clip. And don't get any fancy here with your offense because what's working is right up the middle. All right, here's the snap. Again to Cole Claw. This time he hands it off. Gabe Fry's first run. Looks like he had a little bit of room until he ran into a wall of gray jerseys. But forward progress is going to leave him only about a yard shy of a first down. It'll be third down and a yard for the Blue Devils. We'll try to pick up some of those offensive linemen, Steve, as we can. Number 75 is Grant Hibbert. We know the center is... Robert Stratif. Uh we've mentioned uh, Jaden Brown in there. He plays both ways. And 64, uh, Daryl Fitzgerald's in there, too. Right. Well, here's a third down and one for the Blue Devils, which of A. Colclaw. And they go to miss the running back over left tackle. Nice job. And uh, the, the offensive line on that left side did a nice job. Opened up a crease there for Mifsud, number 42, Adam Mifsud, a junior. He got to the 40 yard line. And a first down for the Blue Devils. And Mark, it was ran by the other offensive lineman, the offensive guard in there, Logan Boydo. 
Another Boydo. big boy, number 72. Logan Boydo, Jr. <laughs> and the you know, thing is, uh, I'm, we're not seeing Noah Staten in here running back. He had a big night against Skyline, but he got a little banged up on that knee. Maybe that's bothering him a little bit. He did have one carry earlier, but they've got uh, some other backs. They fake it to Fry. They give it to Mifsud over the left side. He'll pick up three or four yards on the play. Line of scrimmage was a 40. It looks like he's going to mark it about the 43. This is a fast-moving quarter with both teams basically sticking it, uh, keeping it on the ground, and a little shaken up there was uh, Adam Mifsud hobbling off to the sidelines, number 42. And, in the, and now Noah Staten checks back into that offensive backfield for the Blue Devils on second down and seven. They need Mifsud back on defense. He's more valuable to him as a linebacker than a running back. From the 38, here is Noah Staten. We got inside the 35-yard line out to the 34. Picked up four yards. Going to bring up third down and about four right here. And the clock running at 3.20 and counting. This first quarter has gone quickly, and it's predominantly because both teams have really stuck to that uh, running game. And I don't want to jinx it, but we've had one penalty for both sides so far. Right, and uh, Culpepper's going to stick doing what he's doing, Mark. And that's just these little counter runs. Right inside, long as the offensive line is doing a job up front, why not you know, keep it going with it? Well, we got movement. We got people jumping, and this was a third and four situation. It's going to change for one team here, and it's going to be against the Blue Devils. So now, and this happened to them in their previous drive. They had a third and short. They came third and longer. Now they move it back five yards, and it's going to bring up third and nine. Good point, Mark. I was getting ready to say that, too, is that last, the first offense series, they, uh, third down, they got first down, it's called back on holding. Now mm -hmm. they had third and short, but then jump off sides. This is what Culpepper cannot do, and then they did not do last week against Skyline. Got to be a little bit more disciplined up front there. Right, from third and four to third and nine. Here's Coleclaw rolling to his right. Here comes the pressure, and they bring him down at the 45-yard line. And maybe a little excitement there, no doubt, by the tackler, Patrick Coffrin. He just made a big play for this Wildcat defense, and now the Blue Devils will have to punt it away. And, Mark, I look how little these guys are Front Royal, or Warren County, and how they do but they're using their quickness, and they just got in on Javay Coclaw. Again, when we go into passing situations, Teams with quick uh, defensive uh, players give Culpepper fits on pass protection. All right, so Gabe Fry will punt for the second time tonight, standing in about his own 35-yard line. The man back there is Jacob Good. And uh, he drops it, but he gets a good bounce, fields it, looks for some running room, hit from behind, hit from the front, and hit from the side. The gang tackle him. There, and uh, in on the tackle was Lewis Chapman, Gabe Fry, and others. And we got a penalty flag down. We got a penalty flag down now. Looked like 42 and uh, number and Najir McDonald getting into it. 42 for Warren County. Yep, that's so it. That would be Patrick Coffin. Now, Coffin was the kid who just made the uh, big tackle against Coleclaw, wasn't he? Yeah. And now we got a holding against Warren County. That'll push them back. Well, we're down to a minute 41 in the first quarter. We're scoreless. This quarter has gone quickly. We'll tell you this broadcast is made possible by Able Heating and Air. You know, there's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air at 718-7556. One, one minute, 41 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Zero, zero. Warren County now after the holding penalty. We backed up and start this drive from their own 10 yard line. Let's see if Culpepper can take advantage defensively here in field position. Here's Dotson. Stiff arms the defender who does not let go. Then he gets some help. That was number 40, Blake Polari. And I think he took a pretty good hit from his teammate who was finishing <laughs> off that tackle. He did, Mark. And I did. Polari's a little slow mm -hmm. getting up. I mean, he took a pop right on the shoulder from his teammate. Better than the head. Yeah. All right. Well, no gain on the play. Here's second and ten. We mentioned Bryce Post, the freshman quarterback. Ronnie Dodson's handled the ball running predominantly for the Wildcats so far. We got movement again. Let's see who they uh, charge with this five-yard penalty. It's going to be offsides against Culpepper. Uh, and it looks like they drew Culpepper offsides. It looks like Culpepper made contact. And again, Culpepper on defense, if you got to – you know, they'll stay disciplined. Don't give uh, Warren County here a, a, a big game, you know, a big long drive here because they started deep in their own territory. Well, the five-yard penalty makes it second and five from the 15-yard line. 
just under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Scoreless at Warren County High School. Wildcats back on offense, second and five from their own 15. Bryce Post, the freshman quarterback, handing off Ronnie Dotson left side. Dotson looked for some running room, and coming up quickly was Nathan, let's say, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, number 13, Nathan Martin making a good tackle. Made the initial hit, and then uh, Willis Chapman came over to help finish it off. And now brings up third and about five again. Here, we've got to have a big defensive play here for Culpepper because I don't see Warren County going for it in fourth down. They're deep in the deep in their own territory here. So, big play here for the Blue Devils. Yeah, they gave him a yard, so it'll make it third and four, or actually two yards, third and three from the 17 yard line. Big third down for both teams here as the final 10 seconds ticking off this first quarter clock. Here's Post, rolling to his right, throwing out there in the flat. Got a receiver, Jacob Good. He's got first down yardage and more. They force him out of bounds, just shy of the 35-yard line with two seconds to play here in the first quarter. And, Mark, that's a too easy of a play to make on offense. You cannot play that soft coverage out there on the, uh, in, Warren, in Warren County, on that wide receiver for Warren County because they're showing and proving tonight that they can sit there and hit those flankers, those wide receivers, basically just almost as good as a handoff. Well, you know, a toss play. They're just tossing out there, and, and if you're going to play 12, 15 yards away from them, that's an easy uh, throw and catch and first down. Well, and that means they'll probably have to make an adjustment pretty soon. Well, right now, we've the uh, first quarter has expired, and we'll take a break and come back for the start of the second right after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Welcome back and to the start of the second quarter here at Warren County High School in Front Royal, Virginia. As we start the second quarter, we're scoreless and the Wildcats are on offense. First and 10 from their own 30. In the gun, quarterback Bryce Post. Dots in the ball carrier this time. Got really nowhere to go. Blue double defense there withstanding that assault. And they hold the ball carrier to a gain of two yards. As they spot it the 32 yard line, it's second down and eight. Opening minute here of the second quarter. And Steve was talking about a possible or probable adjustment the Blue Devil defense is going to have to make. We'll revisit that here in just a moment here at second and eight. Back to Ronnie Dots in the ball carrier and not much doing. The Blue Devils, a couple of those players were waiting for him, including number 60, Brandon Miller. Now he got to the 35-yard line, and it'll bring up third down and five. Mark, so, Steve, know, what about the adjustment you think the defense should make? Well, they got to lock up. they got to get man coverage and right up on them on the line of scrimmage, disrupt their route a little bit, you know, and bump them. You can bump in the first five yards. Look right now. Look how soft coverage they're both playing on all the wide receivers. And this is a third down and five situation. There's play action. Here's Post. Got a little bit of time back there. Now he slips, and now he throws it away. 
So the Blue Devil defense holds there, yeah. and this will for a fourth down. Is this going to be a penalty flag coming in? Yeah, potential grounding against uh, Warren County. Was not outside the tackle box. He mm. had to be outside those hash marks, and he wasn't, and so he got uh, uh, intentional grounding. The Warren County thought it should have been uh, roughing the passer because he looks like he's hurt. Yeah, he seems to be a little shaken up. He was on his feet, then he went back to the turf. Now the trainer comes out to check him out. Now they lift him back up on his feet. And that's Bryce Post, number 10, the freshman quarterback. He rolled out to his right. The pressure, I think, came from 60, number 64, the Blue Devils, wasn't it? Yep. Daryl Fitzgerald. And then he threw it away. And they threw the penalty. And so this is the intentional grounding. And they move it back to the 23-yard line with that penalty. And, and plus it's loss of down, but it was already it would have been fourth down anyway. And, dro yeah, dropping back deep will be Capone Hoffman. Don't you know he'd like to get his hands on this football? He sure would, and he needs to get his hands on it. <laughs> but, Mark, Barrel Fitzgerald's a big guy, and that quarterback is so little for uh, Warren County. Daryl just, when he was thrown away and sack on it, he just fell on him, and that's what shook up the quarterback. Stuart Ashley, the punter, <laughs> standing inside his 10-yard line. As I mentioned, Capone Hoffman. The lone safety back for the Blue Devils. Short kick, but it's a high kick. This one is going to bounce down and take a Wildcat roll. It's going to go out of bounds at the Blue Devil 28-yard line. That's where the Blue Devils will set up shop once more on offense. Their third possession of the night. We are scoreless in the second quarter with 10.35 to play. And this broadcast is made possible by Virginia Community Bank, your bank of tomorrow and every day after. Virginia Community Bank. Banking for life at 829-6034. Well, we've got uh, a fellow here tonight covering the uh, event for the Star Exponent we haven't seen mm -hmm. since yeah. last football season. Since Guy by the name of Chuck Jackson. Yeah, you know him? Yeah, I think we oh, know there he, he is. is. Yeah, 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 there he is. <laughs> yeah, we, I think it was the Lafayette <laughs> game down in Williamsburg. It was, yeah. We went down there with Chuck and Chris Clear. Capella. Yep. Call for back on offense, Steve. They have this one at their own 27. And they go with uh, Cole Claw again back there. Handing off to Staten, the ball carrier, across the 30, out to about the 33. Pick up a six yards on first down. Second and four coming up. And Culpepper just needs to stick with that, Mark. Just giving it the inside and run to the inside uh, handoff to the running backs and Cole Claw taking off. I still think they need to find a way to get the ball to Capone Hoffman or uh, Nasir McDonald. They're your big skill players, and uh, see if Coclaw can uh, get the ball out there to them. And another one, uh, Jordan Williams, a wide out. He's out there, number 81. They stick it uh, to the ground. This is Gabe Fry, penalty flag coming in. As Gabe Fry gets in the open field, picks up great yardage, making people miss, and they finally mock him out of bounds inside the Warren County 40-yard line, but this one may be coming back. It's going to come back. It's going to be a hold against uh, Blue Devils again. Another big play turned back by holding penalty, and they were quick to throw it. <clears throat> and it is holding against uh, the Blue Devils, and it was in the inside line right there. And that when Gabe Fry made his cut, it looked like one of the linemen grabbed and you know took down one of the uh, Warren County defenders, and the official was right there. So that was a big, big penalty again. Uh, negated a big play for the Blue Devils, Mark, and you cannot win football games doing that. They move it back to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and 13. So that's the second holding penalty against the Blue Devils. As you said, negated a great run. They go back to the run with Noah Staten over the left tackle, and Staten driving, got across the 30, out to about the 32. Picked up seven yards. Got some of that lost yardage back, but it's gonna bring up a third down. And it'll be third and six at the Pierce. And what I'm trying to, you know, Mark, and what I'm observing here is, again, Culpepper can run. It's dominating in the run game. But Warren County, with their small, quick players, and I can see why the linemen are getting caught holding, is because they're so quick, and they, when they turn around and trying to look at the defenders and turn around looking for the ball, it's, it's very easy for the linemen to get caught out of position, and they're going to intend to grab. Well, let's see what the Blue Devils do here on third and six from the 32. Cole Claw. Fakes it to one ball carry, keeps it, breaks the tackle, and he'll have first down yardage as he spins his way to the 45-yard line. A pickup of 13 yards and a blue double first down. And there's a good run there by Coclaw, Mark, and let me tell you why. He kept his balance, kept his feet, and he kept his legs moving. 
in through that hole, and he runs with a lower center of gravity. And that's what you want to see with a runner. You want to see him run downhill with power, and Coclaw just proved it there. So the Blue Devils have a new set of downs, first and 10 from their own 45 now, 8.34 to play in the second quarter. We're still scoreless. Jave Coclaw back there, and what Steve classified, I think, appropriately as a modified Wildcat. They hand it off to Noah Staten over the left side. Not too much doing this time, as the Wildcats were ready for him, but he did get a couple of yards. Go mark it at the 48. It'll bring up second down. We'll give him three, actually. It'll bring up second and seven. And Mark, you know, again, it's also going to come down, I think, this game in the fourth quarter, who's in better conditioning. And Culpepper is looking to wear down. That's the only disadvantage of uh, being undersized up front from a defensive standpoint is you get worn down by the big offensive line of Culpepper, and that's what they got to continue to do. All right. There's a snap to Cole Claw. He hands it off to Blake Polari, and Polari gets close to the first down marker at the Warren County 45-yard line. Who's the biggest player on the field for Culpepper, Steve? It's got to be number 77. He's uh, 77, uh, Ta Taha Ali. He's probably about yeah. 360. There he is. And then you got Logan uh, Boydo, number 72, is right behind him. And In fact, uh, Taha Ali just went to the sidelines, and Logan <laughs> Boydo is in there, Who's number played? 72 on that left guard position. And this is first down from the 45-yard line now of Warren County. Snap the cold claw. Straight ahead he goes. Cold claw spinning and fighting for yardage. This is one of those things that just, it just seems like it works well for them every time cold claw gets his hands on the football, Steve. It does, Mark, and he, because the holes are opening up by that offensive line, number 75, Grant Hibbert, who came in for Ali right there and made a good block. And again, what Culpepper, if they can continue to do this and not make mistakes, holding penalties, or any, you know, turnovers, they can push uh, Warren County all the way down the field, and that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, and this is exactly <laughs> what they were doing last week uh, successfully against Skyline. And he picked up nine yards on first down. It's second and one for the Blue Devils from the Warren County 35. They go to Gabe Fry. Fry will have a first down, and he got a couple yards to spare as well. A new set of downs as they move the sticks. And, Mark, I'm thinking right here, Here's this is just me uh, trying to, May guess the play call here, mm -hmm. but would an end around work right here Ooh. with uh, Capone Hoffman? Oh my God! Think about it. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd bet that it would. Play action fake right and run in the middle. Have Hoffman run from a from the outside receiver. And boom. I, I wouldn't say <laughs> I'd bet the house, but I might bet the garage. How about that? All right. <laughs> bet the shed. <laughs> bet the shed. Anyway. First down and 10 now from the 31-yard line. Here's Cole Claw dropping back to pass, airing it out downfield. And he's looking forward, Capone Hoffman. And Hoffman went up into the air, couldn't quite bring this one down. But what a good time. That was a good time to throw a pass, don't you think? It was. Good play right there on first down to throw it in there. But again, he threw into double coverage too, Mark, on the play. Capone Hoffman was double covered. Now, Capone used his athletic ability to try to jump up and get the ball at his highest point. But again, you're throwing into double coverage. You know, where coclaw has got to learn if he's going to play quarterback, don't lock into one receiver, kind of look them off a little bit and throw over to the other side because there was other receivers probably wide open. Well, I tell you, that other receiver might be Jordan Williams. He's a dangerous one as well. Second down here. They go to Noah Staten. Staten looked for an opening. Didn't really find one. As four or five uh, players in those gray jerseys came up to greet him. And it's going to bring up third and long. I mean, and we're going to mark it the 30 yard line. It'll be third down and nine from that spot. And I mean, I was saying end around with Capone Hoffman, another thing, or Nasir McDonald, another thing that would be here roll out Coclaw and do a jet sweep. Uh, that would work here because right now, if you watch from, from up here, mm -hmm. you watch Warren County on defense, they're really pinching and trying to load up the box inside to stop that big power run up the middle. Big third down and nine here for the Blue Devils from the Wildcat 30 yard line. Cole Claw, play action. Airs it out this side for Jordan Williams. There's pushing and shoving, and it's picked off by the Wildcats. Here's the return man getting knocked out of bounds by Gabe Fry. It was number six, no, number eight. Uh, number eight, that was Ben Vogt, the cornerback. And it's going to be 15 yards tacked on in the play by Gabe Fry for a late hit out of bounds. I saw the flag being thrown because he was out of bounds or, or helmet to helmet. 
and we'll, we'll see what the uh, call is. Well, the other thing, too, Steve, I didn't know, uh, did you think there was some contact uh, against that receiver when the ball was in the air? Oh, the sideline warning. That's what was the sideline warning against uh, Warren County. So no no yards, Mark. Off. But, yeah, right. I thought you're right, Mark. There was some pushing off there, but it could have been pushing off by Culpepper's receiver. But Coke claw has got to learn. You just can't throw it up there. That's all he did was just throw it up there, and you're throwing into double and triple coverage. That was an easy interception because there's really no zip on the ball. It was just kind of heaved up there. And, uh, you know, the passing is not his strength. I get that. And uh, so Culpepper, again, turned away, driving the football, looked impressive offense. But, again, Warren County held him, got the turnover. And they come out, no huddle, Warren County. And Ronnie Dotson, the ball carrier, over the left side. Yeah. Picked up close to four yards. Well, this broadcast is made possible by CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center at 825-2200. And, you know, Mark, I was thinking if they could get Eric Wilson back healthy, I don't know what the status is on him. I mean, he's been out now since the start of the season. I don't know if he broke his shoulder, separated it, what have you, but if you could get him back and throw him in some passing plays with that run game, that made Culpepper need more potent. Yeah, they really need that dimension. Uh, this time the ball carrier is number 30. And that's uh, Franz, Darren Franz. And he gets to the 40, and that's going to bring up third and five. 425 to play here in the second quarter. We remain scoreless. A couple of turnovers against the Blue Devils here tonight. And I think we, we got a new quarterback in there. It is Jacob Good, actually, in the Wildcat formation. They snapped it to him, and he picks up first down yardage. Blue Devil territory, and throw a penalty flag in there late after that tackle. It's either going to be a late tackle, late hit out of bounds because he drove him into the bench, or it's going to be a sideline warning. We'll see who the call is here. And it's probably going to get to Culpepper. It's going to be unsportsmanlike. Looks like late hit. Here it comes. Here comes the call. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Dead ball foul. Personal foul against the Blue Devils. So we'll mark this one off. Well, that's one of those uh, mental mistakes that really hurt a football team as they tack on 15 yards here. And now Warren County will have it first and 10 from the Blue Devil 33-yard line. Again, you know, Culpepper has been shooting themselves in the foot, Mark. They're the ones that they've been kind of dominating statistically-wise this football game, but they don't have anything to show for it because of penalties and turnovers. And, uh, you know, stuff like that is not going to win you a football game. Here's the running back, Franz. Darren Franz, that is. And shy of the 30-yard line. They'll mark the 31. They give him two. It's second and eight from the Blue Devil 31-yard line. Three minutes, 45 seconds to play in the second quarter. I mean, Mark, it's only 7.33, and we're almost all finished with the first half. Yeah, it's been a quick, <laughs> a very fast-moving first half. It really would have been quicker had it not been for those, what, four or five penalties. You're right. Well, they made the change. The post is out of there. Here's Ronnie Dotson, the ball carrier, tries the left side this time. Here's another penalty flag in, and uh, he sort of picked his way and took his time, picked up positive yardage. Just a shy of the first down, but let's see if they're going to bring this one back. And they are. And it's going to be a holding this time against Warren County. So that's going to work in the Blue Devils' favor right there. And that after that unsportsmanlike gave up a big 15 yards, they're going to give most of it back on this holding call. Well, as we mark this one off, we'll tell you this broadcast is made possible by Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service, and a cornerstone of our community. Battlefield Automotive at 547-3673. And move the ball back to the 40-yard line. And it is second down and 17. So the personnel change. Bryce Post, the starting quarterback, came out. And here is the direct snap to number 11, Jacob Good. Looked like he was going to bust out of the pack, but coming over to make the tackle to make sure he didn't get untracked was Capone Hoffman, and he held him to a three-yard gain. And, Mark, I'm watching the freshman quarterback uh, over there for Warren County um, in the post. He's sitting there with his ankle, with his shoe off, with an ankle, 
ankle wrap tonight, so I doubt we'll see him the rest of the night. In his place, Jacob Good, number 11, serving sort of like uh, J Javay Colclaw for Culpepper now. It's third and 14. Ronnie Dots in the ball carrier, tries to get to the outside. He's being chased by Krim. Before Krim can catch up with him, Capone Hoffman comes over and makes a nice tackle to stop that one before we can get going with it. And it's a holding call. Wow, another holding one. against Warren <laughs> County. Now they're, uh, as the expression goes, shooting themselves in the foot here with yep. these two holding penalties. Yep, and I believe the Blue Devils, I'd make him march it back because, you know, now you got a decision. It's going to be third and long. And they're gonna, is he going to decline it? Yeah, they're, they got accepted way. Warren County's attacking the edge mark mm -hmm. against Culpepper because Culpepper on defense is pinching down in instead of just holding her on the defensive ends. The outside linebackers aren't holding their position, and, and Warren County's taking advantage on the outside. Ball moved back to the 42 yard line, makes it third and 19. Well, it looks like they had an opportunity in that last play to get the edge, and then uh, Capone Hoffman came up quickly. My, that. my question, why would you accept it at third down? Why wouldn't you make it fourth down? Would you be going for field position? Yeah. All right, here's I, third I, and yeah. long. Here's a pass. This one overthrown. Intended for number 24, Logan DeHaven. Now we've got a fourth down and 19. We would expect to see the punter, Stuart Ashley, come on. And here is the punt team coming on with one minute and 54 seconds to play here in the second quarter. And we are scoreless. Both teams have had some success running the football, not so much passing it. No, and, and I don't expect much passing going to go on tonight either. But that's exactly what you said, Steve, coming in. Mm -hmm. You expected both teams to really establish a running game and, and really go with that. And well, that's their bread and butter, and that's what they do. So, all right. Come to the dance, the lady brought you. Oh, here's a bad snap. This one picked up by the punter and has to quick it, uh, kick it quickly. He does a pretty good job, and it takes a wildcat roll. I'm not sure he could have done it much uh. better had everything <laughs> gone uh, normal. The rugby style. Yeah. All this again. Yeah. But, again, that was lack of pa punt rush. I'm rushing, you know, the punter on against Culpepper. If they had put some pressure on the punter, maybe they would have picked up that uh, fumble and they would have had excellent field position. But good uh, – Heads up play by the punter from Warren County. Wondering if the Blue Devils were playing uh, in defense against what might have been a possible uh, fake punt. Not sure. But with that punt and a very good roll, Wildcat roll that is, Culpepper pinned back. Uh, they have it on their own 12-yard line. Here's Cole Claw throwing out there to Nazir McDonald. McDonald trying to Stretched that one a little more than he was able to. He uh, drew a uh, slew of gray jerseys, and they stopped him for a nominal gain, one yard, second and nine coming up. Clock running a minute 20 to play here in the first half. Another play that will work here, I think, in Culpepper's favor too, Mark, mm -hmm. would be a little screen right over the middle, you know, like Gabe Fry or, right. you know, just let him rush in and because the, and the linebackers are really pressing, and there's nobody there, and it could be a big gainer. Amani Hoffman at the bottom of your screen wide. Cole Claw dropping back. He's got a receiver. It's caught inside that 25-yard line. This will be a first down catch. That was made by Capone Hoffman, and that will move the sticks and give the Blue Devils a little more breathing room out there. And, Mark, I, and it's a timeout by the Blue Devils. That was a good throw there by Cole Claw. He mm -hmm. showed me something right there where he zipped that ball right into the, to uh, Hoffman, and I think that's what he needs to do instead of just heaving it up there on these long bomb throws. Well, we've got a timeout on the field. We'll take a quick one as well. We'll come back with the Blue Devils looking at first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Stay tuned. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. 
Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield, Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. We're back and the Blue Devils have it first and 10 from their own 24. After the timeout, they have 54 seconds remaining here in the first half. Cole Claw dropping back to pass. Protection holds up, he airs it out. He's got a receiver at the 45 yard line. It is Capone Hoffman. And that is a 16 yard, or make that a 21 yard pass reception. Yeah, that was a good throw there. Showed, showed off the arm strength of Coclaw right there, throwing across his body, throwing all the way out there to the left side to Hoffman who made a good catch, but good play here for the Blue Devils. They gotta keep it going now. I may mix in a little bit of run right here. Well, they only have 39 seconds. Clock ticking. Hopeful throws again. This one over the middle. And this one caught by Jordan Williams. His first catch tonight. And the Blue Devils, Blue Devils will take another timeout. So now we're going to get into a clock management situation where the Blue Devils on the timeout after the break will have 31 seconds. And they'll have one timeout remaining, I believe. And they're going to have second down and seven but they're in Warren County territory at the 47, 48 yard line. Steve, what are you drawing up here? What are you telling your players considering your field position and the fact you only have 31 seconds to play? You gotta go to the sidelines, Mark. You gotta attack the sidelines. Get in, you know, get a little in and out, move it down the field, you know, and try to go get a little bit closer and then throw into the end zone. Uh, again, Cole Claw's not gonna have the arm strength to throw it here in the end zone. So you gotta look for a little 15 to 20 yard sideline routes. And the way Warren County is defending on these wide receivers of Culpepper, watch when they line up. They're basically lining up in a, like a sideways position. And if uh, Capone Hoffman would see, see how number two is lined up like that, mm -hmm. if he'd fake the inside post and then break outside, he could be wide open. All right, Cole Call wants to pass it. There's it out near to the near side. Hoffman goes up. Beautiful catch near the 30-yard line. Well, he just out leaped the defender there, the unlucky uh, – Brett Dickerson, number two, and that was a mismatch because uh, Hoffman had height and he had uh, jumping ability. And, and, you know, I know uh, uh, Coach Thompson is going to be looking for uh, <laughs> Capone Hoffman to play some basketball for him <laughs> again uh, this season. He just proved it right there. Just, and I think you can take advantage of that because of the corners for uh, Warren County are very little and short. Yeah, he picked up 19 yards on the, on the uh, pass play, and now it's first and 10 now. From the 29. Here's Cole Claw. Here comes some pressure. He gets away from it. He's at the 30. Going to keep it 25. Out for the 20. And they tackle him inside the 20 yard line. And the clock is showing no time left. And the looks like Warren County is going to send their players to the uh, locker room. They think it's over. Let's see. And the Let's clock see. says we are out of time. See what the officials say. And again, you know, because that's when. You know, Coclaw's got to throw it away right there to preserve time, but he ran the ball or at least got out of bounds. But I don't think he, they got it in time. Well, he was in trouble at first. He had to get away from the rush. And then after that, he was uh, on his feet for a while, and he certainly burned a lot of seconds. See what the, they're still saying. They're well, it looks like they're going to, looks like the players are going to go to the locker room. So they're going to say, we are out of time. The clock has expired. And here at Warren County High School. We've played one half, we're scoreless. The Blue Devils don't particularly like it, but both teams will go in, regroup, 
assess the first half and start thinking about what they can do better in the second half. As they do that, we'll take a break. We'll come back after the intermission for the start of the third quarter, and Warren County will receive the Culpeper kickoff. Stay tuned, everyone. You're watching Blue Devils football on the Culpeper Media Network. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. All right, welcome back to our broadcast and to the start of the third quarter. Culpeper will be kicking off, and that'll be uh, provided by Gabriel Barros, the sophomore. We are scoreless here. See, we got some first half statistics, courtesy of Chuck Jackson, who's covering the game tonight for the Star Exponent. Total offense in the first half, Culpepper 143 yards, Warren County 70. Uh, Jave Colclaw led Culpepper with 42 rushing yards. Uh, Ronnie Dotson was Warren County's top runner with 36 yards. The penalty yards thing is, a, is certainly something to address. Culpepper had 45 penalty yards and 25 for Warren County. Here is a kick short. They keep it on the ground and a reception there made by number 27. That is for Warren County, Thomas Cantrell. And on the short kick and uh, Cantrell doing a good job of fielding it for his teammates. The Wildcat offense will start the third quarter. Excellent field position at their own 45. And again, we were scoreless in that first quarter. How did you see things, Steve, for both teams? Well, Mark, it was a, you know, both offenses were kind of moving the ball. They were both heavily run-oriented. But I think the big glaring statistic that stands out to me is the penalty yards. I mean, it, it negated a couple of good Culpepper drives. Now, it looks like uh, Post may be back in the game. He is. Bryce Post was a freshman quarterback. Remember, he was shaken up some in the, in the second quarter. This is an offside penalty against Culpepper. He was shaken off, and then they went with a different look. He came to the sidelines, and uh, they went with Jacob Good back there in their own Wildcat formation. But now Post is back, and Culpepper jumped off sides. We'll have first and five now from midfield. And again, the uh, Culpepper, the penalties are hurting the Blue Devils tonight, Mark. And that's uncharacteristic because, again, they didn't have any uh, hardly any penalties against Skyline, and now they've committed a lot tonight. Here's the pitch to Ronnie Dotson. And Dotson will have first down yardage. Well, we talked about uh, 45 penalty yards for Culpepper in the first half, and now they have 50 with that five-yard penalty. And this is a first down. Warren County now has it, Culpepper territory, at the 45. Opening minute here of the third quarter at Warren County High School in Front Royal, Virginia. A scoreless first half, and the Wildcats will try to take advantage of excellent field position on this opening third quarter drive. Here is Jacob Good coming to the outside, 40, and hit out of bounds at about the 35-yard line by 
Number 13, Nathan Martin, and number seven, Lewis Chapman. And again, it looks like Warren County is trying to go back with Poach back in the quarterback. I didn't think he was going to come back in the way his ankle was looking, but they must have wrapped it up here at halftime. But it looks like Warren County is going to try to attack the edges against Culpepper. Again, Culpepper, on their, especially on their corner, are playing a little bit too far off. Nine-yard gain, second and one, high snap. And here's a penalty flag as they hand the ball to, hand the ball off to number 44, Hunter Wines, and uh, number 64 for Culpepper, Daryl Fitzgerald in on the tackle. And we're going to have a holding call against uh, Warren County, Mark, and now the laundry is really starting to get a little dirty on the field a little bit. We're getting us put, they haven't picked up the, the laundry, and Mama's scolding them right now. <laughs> it's the holding penalties that really are hurtful or injurious to these offenses. Right, and it's holding because it's a run-heavy, it's a, a run-oriented offense, and the officials are calling it tight. And if the linemen get their hands outside the shoulder pads, you know, in the chest area of a, of a defensive player, they're going to call it. Second 11 now from the Blue Devil 46-yard line. They fake it to good. They hand off to Ronnie Dotson. Dotson showing some footwork and some movement. And he got inside the Blue Devil 30-yard line before they brought him down. They'll mark it at the 29. It's a first down for the Wildcats. So that holding penalty didn't hurt them there as uh, Ronnie Dotson went to work really his longest gain of the night. He led the team in the first half with 36 rushing yards, I believe it was. And right now, Mark, it's got Culpepper back on the heels defensively. And basically, they're running almost like a wing attack. Uh, <clears throat> a single wing or a double wing attack in from that offense. They did a jet sweep with a fake inside to the jet sweep and then the handoff inside. Big game. Here's Post. He's got time. He's throwing and the pass is incomplete. And the penalty flag comes in late. Jordan Williams defending on the play. And the Wildcats uh, celebrating, believing the penalty will be against the Blue Devils. We'll Could see. Could be interference against Culpepper. Pass interference. We'll see what the... It is. Good call. Pass interference. He didn't turn around and make a play for the ball, Mark. He guard, you can't... If you're a defender... You can't face guard a receiver without taking your head and looking back for the ball. And that's exactly what happened right there. And they mark it off down to the fifth, just inside the 15 yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at the Blue Double 15. Well, Bryce Post, the freshman quarterback, in there to start the third quarter. Some of the other players, number 44, Hunter Wines. The other go-to player, a couple of those have been uh, Ronnie Dotson, number 21, and Jacob Good, number 11. We expect to call those names continuously here in the, uh, or consistently in the third quarter. Here's Post. Protection was there. Now, he finally gives way, and he has to throw it, and it's incomplete. Intended for his receiver, <coughs> Ben Vogt. And Mark, I thought he might have stepped over the line of scrimmage with that throw, but again, he had a plenty of time to throw mm -hmm. the football. Second down and 10 now. Wild catch. Ball marked just inside the 15 yard line. Opening minutes of the third quarter. We're still scoreless, but the Wildcats in position to change that on this drive. Here's Post rolling to his left. Now he hands off to Ronnie Dotson. Dotson, they had him by the jersey. They slowed him up enough for the Blue Devils to converge on defense. And Blake Polari and others coming over, including Brad Krim. Polari, Blake Polari coming up a little gimpy there. They stop him just at, at really at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and 10 from Mark, the 15. Blue Devils got to play tight defense, defense right here. Two down territory. Don't look for the Wildcats. Probably go with the field goal route. They don't get here on third down, but big third and 10 play right here for the Blue Devils. Keep everybody in front of you and make sure they don't get behind you into the end zone. All right, here it is, third and 10 from the 15. Bryce Post, the quarterback. Hands off Ronnie Dotson. They go to him and not much doing this time. They were sort of looking for him. Big number 77, Taha Ali in on the tackle for the Blue Devils. Now we'll have a decision to make. It's fourth down. What's your field goal unit look like? Well, it looks like they're sending them onto the field because 
The place kicker is Stuart Ashley. In fact, he's also the punter. And uh, they have it marked at the uh, 14 or 13 yard line. Seven yards for the spot, 20. This will be a 30 yard field goal attempt if they go for it here. Yeah, watch the fake. And the holder is Ben Vogt. And they will mark it right at the, spot it at the 20 yard line it looks like. So it'll be a 30 yard field goal attempt by Stuart Ashley, the senior kicker. If he connects, this will be the game's first points. You see, Budo can get a rush here. Here's the snap, here's the hold. Kick is up, it's gonna be long enough, and the kick is good. <laughs> So, from 30 yards out, Stuart Ashley connects on a field goal. That's our first points of the game. It's 3 nothing Wildcats with 8.46 to play in the third quarter. Well, Steve, they did take advantage of excellent field position. They started this drive from their own 45-yard line. And they took advantage of a couple of Culpeper penalties as well. Mm -hmm. Culpeper kind of shot themselves, in the f shot themselves in the foot defensively there. But, you, get, you know, going away, just giving away three points and not a touchdown, that's got to be a morale booster a little bit for the Blue Devils. And now they just got to they just got to play the f uh, football the way they were playing in the first half, Mark, with the running game and just cut down on the penalties. Well said. Well, this broadcast is made possible by Found and Sons, investing in youth at all levels to help make tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons at 825-3530. 8.46 to play in the third quarter. And Stuart Ashley, who a moment ago connected on a 30-yard field goal, will tee it up to kick off to the Blue Devils, who have Jordan Williams and Chave Colclaw back deep, hoping to return one. And now the Blue Devils need a big play here, Mark. See if they can get one here on the kickoff. And here is Ashley's approach and his kick. It's a onside kick, and this one is fielded nicely by our Amani Hoffman. What a nice job he did uh, to field that ball. You got to give him credit there. He did, Mark. And I was, I was almost saying it didn't quite go ten yards. I know. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. That even if he hadn't fielded it, did the, did the kick go ten yards? Right, and that's. Uh, but it almost caught Culpepper napping right there. If it wasn't for Armani Hoffman, but now Culpepper's got to take a good advantage of the field position, starting on the Wildcat 49-yard yeah. line. Yeah, I was going to say they're going to start on the Warren County side of the field at the 49, and so the Blue Devils with excellent field position. They stay with Javay Colclaw back there. Noah State in the ball carrier. Tried it up the middle, got to the 45. We'll pick up four yards, second and six, Blue Devils. Clock ticking, 8.35 to play in the third quarter. Our score, 3-0 Wildcats. How about some other schools in Virginia known as the Wildcats? Let's name them back and forth. I'll start with one. I'm going to start with Rockbridge. I'm going to start with Mountain View, coached by ex culpepper coach Luke Thorntino. Very good. All right, how about uh, Great Bridge, known for the wrestling team? That's a good one. How about Centerville? Centerville is a good one. How about... Javay Colclaw up the middle, found an opening. Inside the 40-yard line, he'll have a first down. Like, let's see, who do we else we have? Wildcats, Steve. Armstrong in Richmond. Armstrong in Richmond. Richmond there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, we got, you know, but uh, what's the number one uh, nickname in the state of Virginia? Well, would you believe the Eagles of all things? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Second being the Bulldogs, and third being the Tigers. And I was surprised the Bulldogs <laughs> was number two. I thought it might be the Panthers or. Yeah. The Tigers. <laughs> yeah. All right. First and ten Blue Devils from the Wildcats' 38-yard line. Javay Colclaw handing off Noah State and trying to get to the outside. And he got a little bit of running room. Not a whole lot, but he did pick up about three yards on the play. So, and then we found, we, we've been talking about eight schools in Virginia, seven in the Virginia High School League, one in the in the Independent School League, Fort Kenyon, but eight uh, schools in Virginia named the uh, Blue Devils, but we found an, another one tonight. <laughs> we found another one. We've been saying that we knew the, the other seven, but we found the eighth one. That's Virginia High in Bristol. There you go, That's Virginia. Yeah. So quite a few down in the southwest Virginia area, Blue Devils. All right, here it is, first and ten. Cole Paul straight ahead, and he gets inside the 30-yard line. This is a running game that's uh, 
picks up four and five yards a pop, and that's exactly what, what you want it to do. And then when you're talking about ball control, really what you're talking about is holding on to it and not giving up holding penalties. Not giving up holding penalties, and that's what the Blue Devils got to do. They're, they're so big up front compared to the uh, Warren County uh, defensive line. Trying to run outside isn't going to work for the Blue Devils because the Warren County speed, but run right at them and bulldoze them, and exactly what they've been doing. Here's a third and one. They go to Cole Claw again. He'll have a first down. Well, that seems to be virtually automatic. If you need two or three yards, Cole Claw is going to get at least that for you. That'll move the sticks, and they're going to spot it inside the 25-yard line, just inside the 25. And uh, Wildcats up three to nothing uh, on the 30-yard field goal by Stuart Ashley came at the with eight minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Blue Devils trying to come back here. They go to Gabe Fry. And Gabe Fry gets it down to about the 20-yard line. So four and five yards a pop, Steve, for the Blue Devils here. But again, excellent field position to start this drive. We got an injured player there. And I think that's Logan Boydo, isn't it? Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. it looks like a big uh, um, Ali's going to come in for his place, but it's like Logan's hurting on the ankle. And as uh, Henry Wolf and, uh, attends to him, and they take a look at how Logan Boydo is doing, we'll take a break and come back when the action resumes. Keep it right here on the Culpeper Media Network. You're watching Blue Devils Football. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Well, back at, uh, with our broadcast, the injured Blue Devil was Logan Boydo being assisted to the sidelines by the help of some of his players including Jaden Brown, number 51, and Brown checks back into the lineup as the Blue Devils have it second and six now from the Wildcat 20-yard line. Now the Blue Devils trailing three to nothing in position to answer that 30-yard field goal that uh, Stuart Ashley of Warren County connected on at the 846 mark. We have 636 to play here in the third quarter. And here is second and six at the Warren County 20 for the Blue Devils with Blake Polari, Noah Staten, on opposite flanks of Jave Colclaw, the quarterback back there. Direct snap to Colclaw, here he comes, changing direction, and he picks up a few yards before they gang tackle him near the 15-yard line. Let's check that, it was, a, it was a second and six. It's gonna be close to a first down. And Mark, I'm looking at the formation right here. There's, just, it, there's nothing fancy about it. Mm -hmm. It's three backs in the backfield with Logan, with uh, Jave Colclaw as the uh, quarterback and the two running backs are right tight right up against them. It's just yeah. three of them back there. Basically that's telling the defense we're going to run the football and we're going to run it right up in the middle. Yeah you know <laughs> uh, uh, it was a second and six and uh, Coquall picked up seven yards in the first down. Now the Blue Devils have it 
first and 10 from the Wildcats 13. See, look how tight that formation yeah. is. And this time they have Gabe Fry and Blake Polari back there. This is Gabe Fry. And Fry lowers his shoulder and keeps those legs churning. He is tackled just, just shy of the six yard line. Four or five Wildcats in on the tackle there, including Brett Dickerson, the outside linebacker. And what Culpepper's got to do is just keep doing that, just using her strength, especially up front, and just kind of just overpower and use her and just overpower the Wildcats, and that's exactly what they're doing. But they need to answer the score here. All right, the ball is at the six-yard line. It's second and three. And, Steve, I know you're warming up those, uh, the voice, aren't you? You're getting ready. Getting ready. Here's Staten back there in Polari. Cole Claw, they hand it off to Staten. Staten picking his way for yardage, and he's in for the end zone. Yes, touchdown, Cole Pepper. Here comes Steve Peacock. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Noah Staten from four, from six. six yards out, running right up the middle. Nothing fancy. We've been saying it all night long. Cole Pepper answers the field goal, and answers and comes back with a score. It's now six to three. And on for the point after will be number 29, Gabriel Barros. And the holder is Capone Hoffman. Looking to make it a four-point game here. Snap the hold, the kick is up, and it's good. 7-3 to three our score in favor of the Blue Devils. So, Steve, Warren County started the third quarter with excellent field position. They drove down to the Blue Devil 13. And they went for a field goal. They connected from 30 yards out by Stuart Ashley. They led 3 to nothing with 8.46 to play. And then the Blue Devils took advantage of excellent field position after the onside kick. They received it at the Warren County 49. They marched it down really with uh, exclusively the running game. And it uh, seemed like it was just a matter of time before they were going to punch it in. And I know Noah State and scored, and he was one of the guys we talked about in our pregame show who we thought emerged last week with some good and, and, and impressive game. Yeah, he did, Mark, and he knocked it into the score right here. A good answer by Culpepper. And now what they got to do is just tell your defensive unit, your defensive coordinator is going to be telling the Blue Devils, look, we need to tighten up on defense. Don't let Ronnie Dotson get loose out there on the, on the, on the edge and bottle up and use our strength right now. And uh, that's what Culpepper is going to do and try to wear down these Wildcats. All right, Gabriel Bar uh, Barros will tee it up. Let's see if they kick away or if they try to keep it short. And out of the hands of the deep return man. They do keep it on the ground. This one fielded nicely. Watch out. This guy was one tackle <laughs> away from going the distance. Uh, that was number 12, Rody Cripps. <laughs> and now look at Warren County, Steve, after the Blue Devil touchdown. They're already on the culprit side of the field at the Blue Devil 40 where they're going to set up on offense again. And the kicker, Barrios, brought him down. He got rocked. He hit him. But if it wasn't in, it could have been a touchdown. I don't understand that, Mark. I, 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 I get frustrated with coaches on high school. Kick the ball away. I mean, you just gave – you just scored a touchdown and you just gave ample great field position to the Wildcats. They don't have anybody, in my opinion, that's a deep threat that's going to run the ball back. Well, you gave them a very short field to work with, 40 yards to be exact. Here's Post back there. Ronnie Dots in the ball carrier. They hit him at the line of scrimmage, and they slow him down for the mm -hmm. Blue Devils to come he's over. They steal the ball away from him, and this is number seven coming away with it. Do they say he's down? That was uh, Lewis Chapman who stole the ball. The question is, did, had they already blown the play dead? And see, they blew the play dead. I don't, I don't, I thought cause they, if I was the coach, Wakefield, I'd be upset on that one. They're saying he's blown dead, but, you know, he wasn't down, Mark. He never did to go to the ground. They took the ball away, and, and I, I know Coach Wakefield is not happy with that call. All right, so the Warren County will keep possession. It's second and 10 for the Wildcats from the Blue Devil 40 yard line. Block ticking, 425 to play in the third quarter. Our score, Blue Devils 7, Wildcats 3. Warren County looking to take advantage of good field position here. It's second and 10. Here's Ronnie Dotson. And they slow him down. 
Taha Ali there a pretty good dive <laughs> to avoid uh, the pile on. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, he did because he would have been flagged. Yeah, he, he knew it. He, he had to pancake yeah. the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new definition of the word flop. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did well. Third and seven now. The degree of difficulty is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, watch out for number 11, Jacob Good. They like to get the ball in his hands, and the other wideout out there is Jorge Figueroa. Top of your screen on third and seven. Here's Post. Delayed handoff, Ronnie Dots. Oh, he slipped. And not really sure how far he would have gone, but Daryl Fitzgerald made sure and it's that he be, was there. And it's, it's going to be 15 yards automatic first. Tacked on to that because they're going to get Tahai Ali with a face mask mark. I didn't see that one. Yep, and let's see what the call is because there's a flag right there at the tackle. So you're saying that's that he? No, that's a holding. Oh, oh holding. wow! Oh, wow! That's against Warren County. I didn't see that. that now what do you do? You might want to retract that statement. Or I don't want Taha Ali coming after you. Steve. No, it's. I thought they were going to flag him with for a face mask, but they got it for a hold. They got the Warren County for a hold. All right, they move the ball back to midfield, where it would be third and twenty. So now the Blue Devil defense has a chance here, Steve, to uh, take away whatever advantage that Warren County would have had with that excellent field position starting this drive. Third and 20 now from midfield for the Wildcats. Empty backfield, we got movement right side. Then the Blue Devils jumping there, number 20, uh, George Mosley. But I believe the Wildcats had jumped out of the gate well before that. The receivers all went downfield and the line yeah. didn't move, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think somewhere. Well, they just wanted an early start. <laughs> they know they're not as fast. They got to jump, you know, get out of the gate quicker, right? That's but true. it cost them five yards. And now it's third and 25 for the Wildcats. Now at their own 45 yard line. The clock ticks. Three minutes and counting to play here in the third quarter. 7 3 our score, Blue Devils. Warren County scored first. They scored in the third quarter with a. 30-yard field goal, and the Blue Devils came back. And Blue Devils in good position here on defense, and they air it out. Watch out, this is incomplete, and that was pretty good coverage. Uh, a couple of receivers potentially in position to make that catch, but the ball was thrown in between them. What do you think about the pass? Was there was it off target or was there a little miscommunication about where it was supposed to go? I think miscommunication because the quarterback threw it where he thought the receiver was going to yeah. be. But again, I like the freshman's arm. He had a good arm. He, I mean, that ball was thrown with precision and had a tight spiral and had some, had some uh, depth on it as well. Well, the Blue Devils, the defense really uh, answered the challenge here because Warren County started this drive on the Culp of the 40 yard line. Instead, they started backing up and now it's fourth and 25 from the 45, Stewart Ashley on the punt. Here's his kick, it's a high one. Capone Hoffman will not be able to get under it. This time it does not take a, a wildcat bounce. It bounces out of bounds near the 20 yard line. That's where the Blue Devils will go back on offense leading seven to three with 2.27 to play here in the third. This broadcast is made possible by Triple Image. Make your clothes speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image at 829-1050. Mark, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, uh, we've talked about nicknames of teams in high school, but let's see, who do you think has the most unusual nickname in Virginia high school football or high school sports? Maybe the, uh, there's a new school in Prince William. I'm trying to think of their name. Colgan? Yeah, Colgan. They fake it to Staten, Colclaw keeps it, and he'll pick up two tough yards there. Uh, and I'm trying to think what their nickname was. It was, it was unique. It was kind of neat. Mm. So the question is who has the most unique nickname? Is that yep. Well, how about uh, Rock Ridge Phoenix? Rock Ridge Phoenix? Yeah. You think I'm making it up, don't you? <laughs> no. I that's a new school, I know that. They're fairly new. I think they're in their third year. Rock Ridge, Phoenix, they're one of the many Loudoun County schools. Right. All right. I also like your favorite nickname of all, Phoebus Phantoms. Yeah, the Phoebus Phantoms. That's a great <laughs> one. 
and they're the only school in Nova and Virginia known as the Phantoms. <laughs> yep. And it's a good uh, it's good sound with Phoebus and Phantoms, right? It sure is. It must be we had a 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty against Warren County. Uh, I'm not really sure where that one came in. But uh, rather than the 22-yard line, the Blue Devils will have it now at the 37 with 2 minutes and 11 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock here in the third quarter. Culpepper a four-point lead, 7-3. Now the clock resumes. Jave Coleclaw back there. Hands it off. Noah Staten bounces out of the pack, spins his way. You know who he reminded me of there on that run? No, that was Gabe Fry. Gabe Fry. That was Gabe Fry. He reminded me a little bit of Brad Muster. Remember him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people are wondering who is Brad <laughs> Muster? Where did he play his college ball? I don't know, Mark. Stanford. Stanford. You know that. All right. I saw Christian McCaffrey last night. How did he, he do? He did pretty good for Carolina. Another he, Stanford player. Did Carolina win? Yeah, no, they lost to Philadelphia. To the Eagles. All right, here's a handoff. This is Noah State. Left side, taken down to the ground on a toss by number 32, Cody Pettit. But they're on the Warren County side of, mid, of midfield now at the 48-yard line, and the clock runs. And we're down to a minute 20 and counting in the third quarter. And the Blue Devils have it second down and five. Yeah, there's a big game tonight going on in the Jefferson District tonight, Mark, at Monticello. It's undefeated Monticello against undefeated Louisa. That would be a game. Here's Blake Polari. He can't find anywhere to go. Uh, again, in on the tackle was uh, Cody Pettit. Back-to-back -back tackles by Pettit. And uh, it's going to bring up third down. And it looks like he actually lost a yard. So it's going to bring third down and six. Again here, big third down here for the Blue Devils, Mark. I go right back to your bread and butter. Cocoa right up the middle. But, you know, getting yep. that big Louisa Monticello game is going to have a big impact, you know, come, you know, for Eastern View down the road when we get in the playoffs. Well, we know Lu uh, Louisa County is unbeaten. I know they got a good team down there. I'm not really sure how good they are. Here's Cocoa. He's the guy they go to in these situations. He's not going to pick up first down yardage this time as they held him to about a two-yard gain. Now we'll have a fourth and four. And Kokal, you know, he's getting banged up. I mean, he's going to – it looks like what they're going to bring in here. They're bringing Capone Hoffman. Well, they're bringing in Gabe Fry back to punt. Okay, good yeah. move here, Mark. Yeah, I like to call field yeah. position. You want to play field Finally, position. Yeah, you and got to with the 7-3 lead. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> think uh, – we're not going to get another playoff before the third quarter expires. Third quarter has expired here at Warren County High School where our score is – Blue Devil 7, Wildcats 3. We'll take a break and come back for the fourth right after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield, Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. We're 
Well, welcome back to our broadcast and to the start of the fourth quarter. We'll start this one with Gabe Fry punting for the Blue Devils, standing inside his 40-yard line on fourth and four. Oh, it's a fake. Oh, and he's going to dive for it. It's going to be close. Nope, I think he's going to be about a yard shy. I think he they, is, too. They, it was a direct snap to Capone Hoffman. And it looks like uh, even though he dove for it, he's about a yard shy of that first down. But you know what? The way your defense is playing, you gave up, uh, you, you, you know, you, you put your defense in position last time where Warren County had the 40. So now they're going to, on your own 40. So now they're going to have it at their own 44. I, I don't agree with that call, Mark, and let me tell you why. You're only up 7-3, to three, field position. You had a chance to pin Wildcats back deep in their own territory, make them go the length of the field. Now you're giving them, you know, almost starting position in midfield. I know the defense play is playing well in the second half, but you just don't, you know, you got to go with the odds, and I thought the kicking the ball would have been a better option. All right, a little play action there. Post keeps it straight ahead, and he dives across midfield. And we'll check the spot. He had a little running room right there. Yeah, because what now, what uh, Warren County's doing on offense is widening their splits on the offensive line and showing pass formation and then using the run and they're just splitting the Blue Devils out, trying to, you know, make the, you know, widen the Blue Devil defense. And that's what they're doing and the holes are opening up. All right, here he is, second down and three. From the Blue Devil 49 yard line, low snap. They pick it up and hand it off to Ronnie Dotson. He's hit hard by Ta Ha Ali. And that was a good shot. Yep. A good tackle made by Ali there. And he held him to no gain. Third down and three for the Wildcats from the Blue Devil 49. I'm impressed with Ali the way he's played tonight. He's really playing aggressive, getting after him. Long snap count, trying to draw the Blue Devils offsides. They did, did throw the penalty. Is it offsides? It's going to be offsides on Ali because he was bouncing around and he came across the. Uh, Line and see what it is. They're gonna no. They're gonna say oh. They're gonna uh, say he's jump four. Uh oh. That now that's twice you've caught Ali's number. Yeah. You better hey. watch out. He may. He's bigger <laughs> than you. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I, I apologize to Ali. It was not you. You you drew the offsides penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you meant to say. Ali drew the <laughs> offsides. Now it's uh, third down and eight from their own 46 for the Wildcats. All right. Here's Bryce Post. Man in motion is good. Here's a quick throw over the middle and incomplete because of the nice hit by Jordan Williams, number 81 on the intended receiver, Ben Boat. And that wasn't a bad pass. Without the big hit, I think he catches it for a first down. Yeah, and Vogt was complaining vociferously that they thought he was held. But uh, official said no. Now, big fourth down here, play for uh, the Blue Devils. And you just can't give up first down right here. And uh, it looks like Warren County is taking a lot of time, but they're deciding what to go with it. you got to watch out for uh, Post to run in the quarterback. Well, it's fourth and eight on their own 46. It's a gamble. It's a high snap. Post bobbles it, picks it up, and heaves it downfield. And no, unable to bring it in. It was a short pass. Trying to come back on it was the receiver, Jorge Figueroa. And unable to do so, well, it was a bad snap that made this play go bad from the beginning, and then he just threw it downfield, hoping for the best. So, Steve, I know the gamble didn't play off for the Blue Devils on the fake punt, but their defense bailed them out again. Yep, and Post looks like he's still limping on that ain't gimpy ankle, but again, good kudos to the Blue Devil defense right there, Mark. They put the pressure on Warren County. Now is where you want to keep running the football. <laughs> so the Blue Devils have it at the Warren County 46-yard line. 10-23 to play in the fourth quarter. And they hand it off to Noah Staten. Staten doing a pretty nice job of uh, footwork, waiting for something to open. And then he was able to pick up uh, some yards out across the uh, inside the 45 down to the 42. That's a pickup of four yards. Here comes second and six. Clock running. We're approaching the 10-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Again, the Blue Devils have a four-point lead. It's seven to three. And again, you know, Mark, the... Uh the way the Blue Devils are playing right now is that they just got to dominate the line of scrimmage and just don't get any penalties. Here's Keep. Cole Claw. He fakes it. He keeps it. Left side. Cole Claw. Good pickup. He will have a first down 
as he powered his way to the 35-yard line. And I think the way this game is going, Steve, if the Blue Devils keep it on the ground and they milk some of this clock and they score another touchdown, I think that's going to seal the deal for them here tonight. I agree, Mark. They got it. <clears throat> they take it down here and score. That will cement the game and keep the Blue Devils on track for a playoff berth. Because you got to look at the 13-team Northwestern District. They don't play everybody mm -hmm. in the district. You see, they're, they're mostly playing the Division Three schools, and the Division Four schools play each other. And with a couple mixes, you know, in the regular season, that's how they're trying to balance it out. But we got flag here, and it looks like it might be coming back. Might be a hold on the Blue Devils. Not that, <coughs> and that's been something that uh, has plagued the team tonight: the holding penalty. The handoff was to Noah Staten, and the flag came in there pretty quickly. It came in pretty quick. We'll see what the hold call is. Oh, yeah, holding against the Blue Devils. Just as you thought here. All right, as they mark this one off, we'll tell you this broadcast is made possible by Able Heating and Air. You know, there's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. That's Able Heating and Air at 718-7556. So the holding pushes the ball back to the 45-yard line where it will be first and 20 for the Blue Devils. And see, right now, <clears throat> you got the class of the Northwestern District right now is led by Liberty. Mm -hmm. They're really, uh, you know, Millbrook was undefeated too, but uh, Millbrook suffered a big loss. You know, Liberty beat them. And uh, Millbrook, you know, has a decent team, but it looks like Liberty's the class of the district. Cold Claw is making something out of what appeared to be nothing. Ball was loose with another whistle blue. Yeah. Clearly before this one popped out. Yeah, if they'd call that a fumble, they should have called their one earlier. Fumble recover for the Blue Devils, but again, Kokola's got to learn just to go down. <clears throat> I know you want to um, uh, reward reward the effort, but again, they're they're coming in and trying to strip the ball. But you know, Mark, you get to look at the Northwestern District. You got the Division Four schools: there, Liberty, Fauquier, Millbrook, Jameswood, and Sharando. They're the, the four schools. The Division Three schools are going to be Brentsville, Warren County, Culpeper, uh, Skyline and uh, Hanley, mm -hmm. so. All right, seven yards on the pickup by Cole Claw. It's second and 13. Noah Staten straight ahead. And Staten will get out to the 35-yard line. He picked up three, and that was the, the previous line of scrimmage several plays ago, and now it's going to be third and 10 from the 35. But uh, almost as important as that clock running. We're down to 745 and counting. And the Blue Devils a four-point lead here. A score would probably, like I say, probably be the uh, clincher for them. Well, the key is, too, here, Mark, if they don't pick up first down here, mm -hmm. you know, I know the ball's on the uh, 35. 35. I'd still punt it and maybe get deeper. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what happens. Up this All way. right, let's see what Cole Claw draws up here. Uh, we got a whistle and a flag to start this one. It's a false start against the Blue Devils. They're going to push it back to the 40-yard line. And we'll have third and 15. And you can continue to say the Blue Devils are, <coughs> they, they, they're they knocking on the door almost playing a consistent football game. But right now, the takeaway from this game, if they come out with a win, is the coaching staff's going to get with the penalties. Yeah. Because they've really hurt the Blue Devils at inopportune times. And here's one of them. <coughs> so. All right. Third and 15 now for Culpepper at Warren County's 40. Clock continues to run, 7.05 and counting. Fourth quarter action, another penalty flag. You're going to delay this time. Oh, no, too many men on the field. Oh, wow. Let's push it back five more yards. And now, see, this is not hel helping Culpepper. You're going backwards, and now, now you're going to probably, if you don't make third down here, you will punt, I would think. Now they're in reverse gear, Steve. Yep. It's gone from the 35 down to the, you know, now to the 45. So they've had 10 yards of penalties. From third and 10 to third and 15 to third and 20. Here's the, right. the 45 right here. Big here's, play. Here's where I say end around. You know, get something to, for a jet sweep. Cole Claw dropping back, throwing over the middle. Oh, it, it was intended for Williams. And I thought he might have had it. They had defenders in front of it there. Number 30 on the play was Darren Friends. And now we have fourth down. How did you see that one? I, it was a good pass. I mean, he zipped it in there, but he, you know, the defender from uh, Warren County made a heck of a play to knock it down. Gabe Fry now will punt, or so we think. He'll line up that way at least. Are you Stands on his uh, near his 40-yard line. And 
the player deep is Jacob Good. Good snap this time. Fry kicks away from him, left-footed. This one is going to bounce down, and it's a nice-looking kick because they're going to down it inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, you know, one thing I learned last night watching, you know, switching off between that Nats game and the Cubs. I was watching the Panthers and the Eagles, and they were saying that uh, left-footed punters are really uh, a big commodity for the NFL. Gabe Fry is a left-footed punter. Not saying he's going to punt in the NFL, but again, they like left-footed punters. That's all Belichick and the Patriots. It gets his left foot of punters because the way the spin of the ball hmm. comes off the of left left foot of a punter. Well, who are the left footed punters? Well, they had one. I don't really know, but I know that the you know in the in the pros, I know the punter for New England's left footed, the punter for uh, uh, the Eagles is left footed, and it drives return men crazy. Yeah, I see. I hadn't thought about it that way. All right, Warren County back on offense. High snap. Here's Post. Got time. No pressure. Down the middle. Picked off. Capote Hoffman has it for the Blue Devils. Here's a nice looking return. Can he go all the way? And he does. And I don't see any yellow laundry on the field. But you know what's coming up? Capone Hoffman on the interception. Steve, I think he caught it uh, near the 25 yard line. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Capone Hoffman with the interception and he runs it in from 25 yards out. And Mark, let's go to replay and watch this play. It's the quarterback right here. He's dropping back. He's dropping back. And he's and Capone Hoffman, he's trying to go deep. And Capone Hoffman's just watching the quarterback's eyes. Perfect interception. Great run back. Touchdown. Interestingly enough, there wasn't pressure on post. No. There's Barros on for the point after. It's a low kick, but it clears that uh, crossbar. 14-3 to in favor of the Blue Devils. They got something to celebrate. Look at Capone Hoffman over there doing the, <laughs> what do they call that? It's not a high five. The it's chest bump. A, yeah, the chest bump, but, but the high five with your body. Yep. And uh, the Blue Devils are really happy with that. So Capone Hoffman uh, brought it back unofficially from 25 yards out. But Well, Mark, you got to look at the Blue Devils' schedule the rest of the way out. They got Brentsville. Mm -hmm. Brentsville's got a down year, and that's going to be a tough game, though, for the Blue Devils to win up there. Uh, Brents Brentsville has been pretty much in a lot of the games they played so far. I don't know how they're doing tonight. But right, so uh, they got Brentsville. They have uh, Manassas Park, Park and then William Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Easily winnable games on out. Mm -hmm. Could finish 5-5 five and five and probably, you know, they're going to take the top eight teams in the region for 3A you know, for here. And so Culpepper could get a five seed. They ended up doing that. They, uh, you know, they could uh, – you got um, – uh, Marshall and uh, Mar um, uh, Armstrong and Richmond. I don't know how they're doing, but and down there. But they, Culpepper could end up here at Warren County. Back again, we don't know. But if the playoffs ended today, if they started today, the Culpepper would have played Warren County in the playoffs. Do you but think if they finish 5-5, five and five, would that be potentially good enough to host a playoff game? Uh, you know, could be. It depends because the 3A region is very weak, okay? Uh, the power in, in – I think the state of Virginia is in the 4A ranks. Oh, yeah. We've uh, talked about that. Here's a short kick taken at the 35-yard line and slung to the ground almost immediately by number seven, Lewis Chapman, he just, on the special team. And right now, Culpepper's using their athleticism, Mark, and they're just overpowering the Wildcats. It's and I'll tell you what, if you watch the Blue Devils, there's a lot of excitement on that team right now. Yeah, I mean, they have a reason to be excited. They're... They were getting beat up the first five games, but look at their schedule. They're getting, they played some good teams. I mean, Eastern View, the juggernaut of Eastern View still rolls on. They were rolling Caroline 42 to nothing last time we checked. And, uh, and that they, was just in the first half. They're, they're going on the seventh consecutive game having running clock. I think that might be unheard of in the state of Virginia. You know, and record could be a record. Could be. Here's post, and here's a reverse. This is good. And the Blue Devils, they stayed at home, Steve. They weren't fooled by that. He'll pick up a couple of yards, and that's about it. Well, they tossed it to Dodson, who handed off the good on the reverse. And the Blue Devils stayed home. That's a good job on defense. And see, I've been saying that's what the Blue Devils should be doing against the Wildcats. But the Wildcats just don't have the quickness to get out there. And, and uh, I think the only way the Wildcats are going to come back is they've got to start throwing that football mark. 5.45 to play, clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Our score, Culpepper 14, Warren County 3. They have it second and six at the 43 post. Delayed, handed off to Dotson. And a nice tackle made by Blake Polari. 
to bring him down before Dotson could get started and do any serious damage. And, that's and they, a, they, get, they limit, limited him to two yards. It's third and four. And I like the play fake that, mm -hmm. that Post did with the look like pass and, you know, drop that little delay handoff. And that's, you know, kind of hurt the Blue Devils here in the first half. But right now they've been watching and seeing it, so they've been staying home. Now then the Blue Devils got to come up with another really two defensive plays. I don't look for Warren County to punt. Well, you know, it's a cliche, but the clock is really Culpepper's friend now. Yes. Here's Post. Time was there. Eventually it'll break down unless he dumps it off, and he does. And he'll have a first down as uh, he dumped it off to his receiver out of the backfield, Hunter Wine. Actually, not out of the backfield. He's a tight end. Hunter Wine's number 44. That'll move the sticks. Warren County will keep it as they're in Culpeper territory now up the 48-yard line. So. And 4.42 and ticking here in the fourth quarter. Blue Devils 11-point lead. Bryce Post, the quarterback, rolling to his left. Here comes some pressure. Picks up a block. Now he throws it, incomplete, off the hands of the intended receiver. It was number 44. That was Hines again. Well, Mark, I just got a text. and um, Or Wines, rather. Just mm -hmm. got a text. I didn't know this. But uh, Coach Hatfield was the Washington Post and Washington Redskins uh, Coach of the Week. Is that right? Yeah. Congratulations to Coach Hatfield. Then. It's 63 to nothing. Culpepper, I mean, each of you over Caroline with eight minutes left. Oh, wow. 63 to nothing. Well, <laughs> you know, and, you know, uh, Chris Capella did it again. He picked he, 63 to seven was his prediction. <laughs> that assumes Caroline will score against those reserves coming <laughs> off deep off the bench, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right. But, and it, they, it, but it, you know, they may still score. But, wow. So, I mean, I, I don't know how many points the, the Cyclones are averaging, but it's definitely well They're over 50. They're averaging 56.8 yeah. But, you know, that's a heck of an honor to be in the Washington Redskins Coach of the Week. Coach Hatfield, congratulations to Coach Hatfield and the Eastern View Cyclones for that honor. All right. So here's third and 14, Warren County at its own 49. And post hand play action. He's got time. Airs it out down field. Got a receiver open. He couldn't get it to him. And that would have been a huge play. The pass intended for Ethan Patterson. It looked like the wide receiver kind of stopped for yeah. the Wildcats. He's looking, trying to find the ball. He was wide open. And Culpepper better check their defense right there. Because if that had been caught, that would have been a touchdown. They would have been right back in this game. And uh, again, he now brings up a big fourth down play for the Blue Devils. Got to get pressure on that quarterback. Yeah, big fourth down for both teams. Warren County, if they're going to have a chance in this one, they have to convert here with 3.44 to play, and they're trailing 14-3, to three, and they have it fourth and 14 at their own 49. Bryce Post will now have an empty backfield. They'll spread it out with five receivers looking to connect and keep the drive alive. Plenty of time back there. Here's a penalty flag coming in. Now he throws against the grain, incomplete, and a nice job on defense made by number 51, Jaden Brown. It's going to be holding on uh, Warren County. They should decline it. Yeah. Number 15, Cameron, uh, looks like Cameron Buchanan is just coming in the defense line. He was held by big number 71 for uh, Warren County, but they're going to decline that and take over on downs right here. Well, you know, Post had plenty of time, and uh, that may have been partly part of the reason may have been that holding penalty. Anyway, he threw it uh, against the grain, trying to connect incomplete. It was a penalty anyway. As you said, they uh, declined it. Blue Devils take over on downs, and they are in the catbird seat here, aren't they? They sure are, Mark. And, uh, you know, going back to Eastern View, beating Caroline 6-3 to nothing, you know, they're number two in the Freelance Star uh, High School uh, poll. Colonial Forge is ahead of them, coached by Bill Brown, because Colonial Forge is undefeated. Colonial Forge has got to play uh, – Stafford tonight. Stafford surprised everyone with a 5-1 record, but uh, it, it's um, uh, you know, Eastern View, the juggernaut still rolls on. And they get, you know, you're talking about Eastern View, uh, they, their bye week is next week. Yeah, they're going to have an easy uh, bye week to prepare. And again, the, the, I would like to see Eastern View tested during the regular season, but uh, again, I don't think anybody wants to see them come playoff time. Here's Gabe Fry looking for some running room. This one closes quickly, and yet another penalty flag comes in. And we'll see what the uh, call is here. Could be a late holding call against the Blue Devils. 
but you know the clap it looks like it's going to be against Warren County might be a personal foul face mask yeah there you go we'll mark this off well we talked about just how loaded the 4A classification is in Virginia for football I mean both regions are the, loaded I think the eastern region is far stronger than the western region and uh you know because well, Lake Taylor got beat last week too who so, beat them um because they've been a they've been a uh a want, force in recent years. Yeah, I want to say it's, um, I have to look, but I just know they lost. I have to look back. It might have been a Hampton or. But Cole Claw on the run. Straight ahead. Spinning. Fighting for yardage. Shy of the 30-yard line. But uh, the clock runs. 2.30 and counting. And the Blue Devils with an 11-point lead. Oh, we got a little uh, tempers mm -hmm. flaring out there late in the game. Wouldn't be prudent. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, 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 Wildcats pull their teammate away. But, he, you know, I think the 4A region's loaded. You've got Dinwiddie up there. you got Monacan. Uh, you know, Dinwiddie and Monacan in the Richmond area is very strong. You still have Lake Taylor. you got Lafayette. Um, Dinwiddie. Din, I already, you know, mentioned Dinwiddie you know, or earlier. Oh, yeah. You know, Dinwiddie and Monacan is really strong, too, in the, in the 4A. And you got Louisa. And you got uh, Eastern View. Blake Polari, the ball carrier, they stopping at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like uh, Warren, Warren County calls a timeout. With a minute 50 to play here in the fourth quarter, Wildcats trailing 14 to three. We'll take a break and come back right after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you've made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. It's third down and three for the Blue Devils from the Wildcat 32 yard line. That usually means Jave Coclaw, and it does. Here he goes. He'll have a first down as he picks up seven yards and moves it to the 25. And that uh, that's a big one right there because now the Blue Devils can really work this clock. And, Mark, you know, you're, we're talking about the playoffs in the 4A. you got the Western side. I mean, Salem lost, didn't they? Didn't they lose? They've lost two games. They lost, they lost to Dinwiddie and they lost to Blacksburg. Uh, Blacksburg's got a strong team. But they they're, do. But they're three, though. No, they buffed them up to 4A. Oh, they did? Yeah, okay. Blacksburg's a 4A school now. Yeah. So then you got then you got Sharando, Millbrook. And what about Woodgrove? We, we, you know, Woodgrove was kind of a down year. I haven't heard much about, it, but you got Liberty. Of Liberty, Bielden. yeah, yeah. They're undefeated. Here's uh, taking a knee and a penalty flag will come in. This may work against Warren County here for unsportsmanlike conduct. It is. He came flying in. They took a knee, and then he came flying in over the top, and that's going to be uh, unsportsmanlike against uh, the Wildcats. And yeah, but gonna, Steve, now we're seeing a good display of sportsmanship. Exercise there by Armani Hoff and the Culpepper and a yeah. couple of those Warren County players, which sort of settles down the emotion some. Yep, and uh, and they're going to say it's against them. It's going to knock on, tack on 15 more yards, 
And all Culpepper is going to do is just get him take a knee. And isn't this what you would call frustration penalties? Yeah, it is. It's frustration on, on behalf of Warren County because it was a big game, Mark. They're three and three. Yeah. They're fighting for the playoff lives, and Culpepper came in here one and five. And Here's then, another. Is this more penalties and, coming in? Yep, against the coach. And now it looks like it's going to be a timeout as well. Look, the officials will be conferring here to sort this one out. Yeah, that's going to be on the coach for uh, calling some names, or the player calling the names against the Culpepper. They're really. Well, we talked about the frustration level because, like you say, Warren County three and three. They were actually one and two at home and two and one away coming into tonight's game. This is unsportsmanlike against Warren County. Um, and I guess it was a game that, you know, you're playing at home. It was, I think, senior recognition night or something. And, you know, they were thinking, you know, got, this homecoming. is a win. It's a homecoming. Yeah, this yeah is a homecoming. homecoming. And, uh, and then you find yourself on a lose again, and it can be frustrating. Yep. It's, uh, um, yeah, it can be very frustrating. And, uh, you know, again, it's going to be um, – you know, but Culpepper has come in, and you know, one and five has got all the momentum in Warren County. They're fighting for their playoff lives because, like I said, Division Three is a little bit on the weaker side. They take the top 18, and now they're talking to the coach, and they're saying, you know, hey, look, you know, the players are sitting there mouthing off, and you know, they told them to stop, and it's just taking the knee. And the coach, I don't know if the flag was thrown in the coach or the or player said something, but he's talking to the coach, and that's when you coach, you got to step up and show the example for your team, and. You know, and say, hey, look, boys, you got to calm down. <laughs> You're here. This is the way it is. And uh, they're going to take a knee, and you can't come be flying in there, <laughs> you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the chicken with its head cut off. Or a missile or a some yep. kamikaze or something. And the officials need to get this under control, and they still want to talk to the coach about it. But, again, they're talking to him, and he's – I think that he's not – I think that the official was talking of is one of his players. The, the players got a little frustrated in there. And now they're all, uh, you know, fist bumping and doing good. So I think everything's fine. All right. Well, with a minute 20 to play and first down, we expect uh, a couple of the uh, Capone Hoffman here to take a knee a couple times. Yeah, and that's all he's going to have to do. And that's exactly what he did. And. And just let the clock continue to run, and, we're, and Warren County can't stop it. They're out of timeouts. Are they? Yep. yep. Okay. Clock will run, a minute 14 and counting. We'll work it down close to uh, near the play clock expiration and then take another knee. So the Blue Devils, Steve, are going to get another win. They're going to win two in a row. That big win last week at home for the Blue Devil homecoming. Then they come here tonight, play a team that, probably expected the win. They knew we knew it would be a close matchup. This is a big win for Culpa. It is a big win. And you know, Mark, you can say what you say about Eastern View and they're they're the juggernaut. It's Jeremy Jack, coach of Spotsylvania, said last week in the free end star, he said they're a machine. He said it's just awesome. But, you know, the battlefield's kinda weak. They're, they're usually one of the perennial strongest districts in the in the in the state, but they're kinda weak this year. Culpepper's in a tough district. They got the Northwestern district. But Culpepper drew a favorable schedule in the back half of their schedule, That's and uh, they played the tough games, and it's now paid off for them in the second win in a row, and now they're going to go to Brentsville to get that third. They have a legitimate shot to finish 5-5, five and five, and, you know, maybe possibly could do some damage. They found that new offense with that running game, and now they come out with a big win tonight, 14-3. to three. Yeah, and Capone Hoffman went in there and on offense and took the knee three times and on that last one went over to celebrate. What about that interception for a touchdown he had tonight? And of course, uh, the Blue Devil defense, I mean, he only gave up a field goal. And that's uh, that's pretty, not only is that impressive, it's particularly impressive when you think about the field position that uh, Warren County had and the Blue Devil defense had to uh, really battle against that as well. They did. And, and now they've got another tough game. they got Brentsville. Brentsville hasn't from a record standpoint, hasn't done well, but they're going to play Culpeper tough. It's at home, and uh, Culpeper just got to keep doing what they've been doing, and I think they're starting to get, and the other thing that impressed me about Culpeper is they're starting to get their confidence back, you know, yeah. and Wayne will do that, Mark, and it'll bring confidence in the team, and I, I have to, again, commend kudos to the offensive line, and mm -hmm. the offensive line coach, they've done a great job with the Blue Devils here, getting that big offensive line, 
They've established an identity with a run game with Javay Coclaw back there, and they're really doing a good job, led by Robert Strait as the center captain, number 68. And you got to just, you know, my hat's off to them. They've done a great job. You look at the Blue Devil uh, sidelines there, a lot of happy players and fans, and they have reason to be with this uh, win tonight over Warren County. Well, that's going to about do us uh, for tonight. But uh, we mentioned that next week, Culpeper plays Brentsville District. We will broadcast that game. The Cyclones, like you say, the juggernaut continues. They get their bye next week. They'll be off. So, hope you enjoyed the game. We certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. And uh, once again, our final score here at Warren County High School is Culpeper 14, Warren County 3. And the Blue Devils move to 2-5 and five on the season. And uh, we'll play Brentsville District next week. Well, for Johnny Krawchuk and Steve Peacock, I'm Mark O'Connell saying thanks for watching and supporting Blue Devils football here on the Culpeper Network. We hope you have a great weekend and a good week, and we expect to see you next time from Brentsville District. So long, everybody. Good day.